am by no means a radical. But there is a rather beloved tradition in the church that over time with me has become more and more problematic, or at least to me. And that is the beloved tradition of referring to Thomas the Apostle as Doubting Thomas or Thomas the Doubter. I mean, think about it. We really don't say that about any other apostles. Yes, we might have James the Greater or James the Lesser, and that doesn't still classify any kind of personality defect that they might have, although I leave it to them to duke out which one's greater and which one's lesser and why. We certainly don't refer to Simon Peter as Simon the Denier or Denying Peter. Even Judas Iscariot is known as Judas Iscariot, not necessarily betraying Judas Iscariot. But Thomas has always been known as Doubting Thomas. And I wonder if, yes, over these last 2,000 years of his beloved tradition, he has not been given a bad rap. A part of me wants to say, let's give the man a break. He's not featured very much in the scriptures. He's prominent in the Gospel of John, in this story, but also in another place in which he doesn't express doubt, but he asks a question. He asks the question, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Without that question, we would not have had Jesus answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Here in the Gospel we read every year on the second Sunday of Easter, which we uh, refer to devotionally as Divine Mercy Sunday, we hear the reference of Thomas doubting the resurrection of Jesus. But in many ways, he was probably bringing up either himself or through the Gospel, John the Evangelist was bringing it up through this story, questions that no doubt were arising among the early Christian communities. How are we to know that Jesus is risen if we have not seen him. Well, in addition to putting our trust in the witness of those who did, which we have been doing for the last 2,000 years, Thomas does raise an important issue. And without him raising that question, we would not have had Jesus' answer, which in that answer is a beatitude, if you will. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. For me, it is one of the earliest passages of scripture that I learned I remember where I learned it in first grade with the religious sister who taught me in Catholic school. And I remember distinctly her stating, we are among the blessed because we have not seen the risen Jesus and yet we believe, we believe what's been taught to us. And yet in the spirit of Thomas, who I don't like to refer to as the doubter, but rather perhaps Thomas the theologian who asks the questions to get the answers that lead to a deepening of faith, I often ask the question, are we really among those who can consider ourselves blessed? Have we not seen? And in seeing, do we recognize? All one need do is look at some of the other stories and the other Gospels, including the Gospel of John, of the risen Jesus. Stories that are called appearance stories, and I like to include recognition stories, because in all cases, it begins with Jesus appearing to someone who doesn't recognize him at first, and then they come to recognize him in very particular ways, and that is a message and a point regarding the risen Jesus' continued presence in our midst that the gospel makes. For example, Mary Magdalene thinks Jesus is the gardener. It is when he addresses her by name, Mary, that she comes to recognize him. The men on the road to Emmaus spent half a day or most of the day speaking to Jesus and they did not recognize him until he broke bread. Then they came to understand that it was him speaking to them on the road when they said, did his words not stir our hearts and set them afire? And when they returned and told the other apostles, the story ends in saying he came to be known to them in the breaking of the bread. So we recognize him in the word that is speaking, spoken to us that hopefully sets our hearts afire, but especially we recognize him and he is known to us in the breaking of the bread. In the great catch of fish, they don't recognize Jesus on the shore until the miracle of the great catch. And then the beloved disciple says, it is the Lord. And as we know from both stories, the one in Luke and the one in John, the catch of fish is metaphorical for the great catch of men that the church has in throwing out the net and bringing in followers for Jesus, bringing in that catch of fish so that they can be sheep for the shepherd. And so we have examples in which we see Jesus is recognized in the ongoing work of the church and its evangelization of the gospel. We see the risen Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And we know that however how much or how little we know Jesus, Jesus is one who knows us well and knows us by name. 
And these are ways in the Gospels that people come to recognize Jesus. And we are called to recognize him in the same way. And so in the spirit of Thomas, who is in fact a theologian, who shows us that there is nothing wrong in doubting, because in the end, doubt leads to questions. Questions lead to answers, and the correct answers lead to a deepening of faith. Something that pulls us away from faith is obviously the wrong answer. Thomas raised those issues. How will we know the way? And Jesus gives us, gives us the answer. And through his doubting, he raises the question, how am I to know if I have not seen him? Jesus gives the answer, blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. But in deference to the other stories of Jesus' appearances and the recognitions of those to whom he appears, are we really among those to call ourselves blessed? We look at simply the most recent experience of our nation, of our world, and even of our church in the social distancing requirements during the coronavirus. Do we recognize Jesus in our midst during this time? We see time and time again that whenever the church has struggled, Jesus has been with them. We constantly preach as a church that Christ is present with the family, and we have certainly seen that accentuated during this pandemic. Where while we have not been able to gather to receive the Eucharist in the breaking of the bread and be present to Jesus physically in this mystery of the Mass, we nonetheless recognize the risen Christ in the faith of the family fostered by parents, which we hope will come even stronger when we are able to gather again physically in our churches to receive the risen Jesus in the breaking of the bread. In the midst of the fear and uncertainty, we see the presence of the risen Jesus in the courage of those who work with the sick, whom Jesus cured, in the courage of those who go out in the midst of the coronavirus to tend to those in need. We see it in the clever ways people find to keep community alive during this time of social distancing. And we pray that the risen Jesus is inspiring our leaders to give hope and inspiration to the people they are called to lead and serve as we prepare, we pray, in the near future to return to our regular lives even as we continue to take precautions. It is in many ways during this season and this unique time in our lives and in our history that we recognize and see the risen Jesus in our midst. And we are called to put aside any doubt because we say there is the risen Christ in our midst. We do see him. And in seeing, we are not to include ourselves necessarily among those to whom Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. So let us give Thomas a break. He raises an important issue. And Jesus, in answer to that issue, gives us an important answer. But in the spirit of people who reflect on our faith, which is the spirit of theology, faith leading to understanding, we might on the one hand say that we have never seen a physical manifestation of Jesus in front of us the way the apostles did and the way Thomas did in putting his hands in his side and his fingers into his nail marks on his hands and feet. But we nonetheless see the risen Jesus among us and we are called to recognize the risen Jesus among us. And in faith we declare we aren't necessarily among those who are blessed because we haven't seen but maybe we are blessed because we do see. And in seeing, we recognize. And in recognizing, we come to the right answer of that question raised by Thomas. And our faith is deepened because we know, not just believe, but we know and we see and we recognize the risen Jesus among us.